three years ago, I was uh, visiting Sri Lanka. Whenever I visit Sri Lanka, I make a point that I spend some time with my dad. And he lives in Nugegore, and it's my honor to spend some time whenever I come over here. On that night, around 11.30, my dad came from his bedroom out into the lounge area and sat on one of the chairs and he was sweating. And I noticed that he was getting into short breaths. I'm an accounting doctor. I'm not a medical doctor. But one thing is that he is a medical doctor. In fact, he's a radiologist. But in the dinner table, lunch table, when we were kids, all he used to talk about is what is happening in the hospital. So we became passive listeners to all those discussions. So when he was sweating and complaining about a chest pain, I knew that he was into a heart attack. It was my gut feel. And then I called a cab. The taxis told me that it will take about five minutes, and I can see during that time that he was getting worse and worse. So I ran onto the road, and I saw a three-wheeler, and I got the three-wheeler in. I got into the three-wheeler. He had something called nitrilingual spray. And I took him, I made the decision to take him to the Kalubovila hospital. While he was in the three-wheeler, I sprayed the nitrilingual spray onto his tongue, which you got to do when someone has a, or is getting a heart attack. And he told me when I sprayed onto his tongue, spray it again, spray it again. I remember I did at least three times. I went to the hospital, I took him to the hospital, he got into the wheelchair, he said, chest pain. And he was in the emergency. And he was getting into heart failure. And whenever the nurses or the doctors were asking him to do certain things, he did respond. Mudia, Raise a bit, all that. He was not well. We couldn't move him, but the hospital said, if you can, take him to a private hospital. So we got an ambulance to take him to our city surgical. To cut short, even in the ambulance, he responded to various commands. And then, while he was in Asiri, this is in the night, middle of the night, 
he was getting better. So I decided around 4 o'clock in the morning to go home and take a nap because I was told by the hospital that I could do so. I came back around 6 o'clock and he was up. And he asked me, where am I? I said, you are in the hospital. And I asked him, how do you remember? What happened? He said, no, I can't remember anything. So, Vice Chancellor, who had to leave early, and the chairperson of the research council who had to leave early. And the chairperson, Dr. Madhura Perma, and head of the department now, Dr. Karnaratna, and distinguished professors and deans, ladies and gentlemen, and warm welcome to students. The question I'm asking you, How did he respond to those commands? Why he couldn't remember? How did he make those choices? If I put it in another way, if I ask you, each one of you, From the time you woke up today to the time you're sitting here, if I ask you to describe every moment what happened, I'm sure many of you would find it very difficult to do so. But the fact is, at every moment, Every living being is making choices and making decisions. You did make a decision to come here either by public transport or private transport, made a decision to choose a certain route. Every moment you made choices and decisions. You made those choices and decisions using information. So it is that information that is fundamental to making choices and decisions. And for us in the accountancy profession, that is fundamental. It is about information that well, we make decisions. So how do we make these choices? How do we make these decisions? And that's what we all would like to share with you today. And how we can contribute in this profession to make this place, make this world a better place. If you look at these pictures, these visuals, some of those are quite familiar to you. You see that university logo, and you see the, in the government of Sri Lanka logo. But as you see those logos, it takes you to physical structures. It connects you to physical structures. So the logos are a way of communicating, transferring information onto physical structures. If you look at the second row, which are the insects, we identify they as insects based on a certain criteria. And then the people. But when we process information, the human mind 
looks at a key aspect which is called the symmetry. So if you look at the people, you can look at two sides, equal two sides, from head to the bottom. You can draw a line. So are the insects. So there are two sides. And if you look at the logo, University of Cavalier, you can look at the symmetry in number of ways. Whichever line that you draw is a symmetry. So there are different types of symmetries. There are bilateral symmetries, there are radial symmetries. That is, we can draw lines in different ways, but we get the same halves. So the human mind actually uses this concept called symmetry to process information. And that's important for us in the accountancy profession, which I'm going to outline to you. If you look at these pictures, what you see is war and peace, and then there's flood and nice weather, and then famine and harvest. So the symmetry could be on space, occupying some space, or the symmetry could be over a time, time duration. Because at no time in the world there was all peace, there was no time in the world there was all war. It is transient. So the key message here is that the symmetry is an ideal situation or the balance, if you want to describe that way, is an ideal situation. But it keeps changing. And our job is to make it ideal as far as possible to make it ideal, make it balance. Let's look at accountancy now. We use the same concepts as the space and time. In accountancy, the space is what we see either through our eyes, ears, our senses, or what we see in our mind, which we call intangibles. But that space is restricted in accountancy to monetization. It is what is can, that can be measured in money terms we identify as spaces. So we have space on one axis and then the, on the other axis is the time. So the basic accounting equation is about assets equal liabilities plus equity. But that keeps changing over time. That space keeps changing over time. So accountancy follows these principles of symmetry, space, and time. So space is about money, and time is about the transients, the change that is occurring. And we can look at annual report, last year's annual report, and this year's annual report, and find the transients, the difference. What happened over time period? But there's another axis. 
exists, which is not, doesn't exist necessarily in the natural phenomena, which we bring into account and say, all the control. Organizations must control assets for it to be recognized as assets. It must control the liabilities, must control the equity. So the control is a notion of attachment that the organization is attached to certain things, which it recognizes in monetary terms as its own. So we bring a third axis or third aspect called attachment. I want to now extend this discussion on to practical application. If you look at a business that is value multiplying, that uses rare material, innovative skills, Persuasive promotion, then it is likely to sell those products and services at a much higher value, higher price. Therefore, it will reap greater profits. But profit, as we understand, is a notion that we have constructed, but ultimately, that profit, we believe, will become cash. It will lead to a cash surplus. So what we have done here is we have achieved a balance, achieved a balance between the two sides. If you look at a loss situation where the organization is using impure material, there's disgruntled labor, strikes and so forth, misinformed pr promotions. It is likely to make a loss. Customers are dissatisfied and so forth. But that loss will ultimately eventuate as a cash shortfall. But what we are achieving here is a balance, is a symmetry. So to achieve this symmetry or the balance, we use the concepts of debits and credits. And through these debits and credits, we achieve the symmetry at a given time and over time. This accounting equation is one of the biggest challenge in the accountancy profession. It is a challenge because it is restrictive. Because it's identifying spaces or the assets which can be monetized. That's all it does. So it is quite a restrictive equation. If I put it in another way, What in accounting, what we do at present is we are looking at the monetized output. Here's an asset, here's a liability, here's revenue, here are expenses. Record them and then make decisions. But we have completely neglected looking at the implications or the outcomes, we have completely neglected looking at how we got there to the output, the processes, and the input. 
They are not recorded. We wait till everything happens. So in that way, a countess profession at the moment has restricted the decision making to what has happened. But it becomes far more important for the contemporary businesses, contemporary organizations to know what's going to happen for these ideas. Can I perceive these ideas in this manner? Can I generate feelings in customers? What happens? How would that lead to revenue generation? What sort of activities staff should conduct? To attain optimum profits, these have been neglected. But you can see that revenue making or loss making or profit making or expense making, they are everywhere. They are in the whole process. It's not restricted to the output. But right now, we are just looking at the output. So, the accounting equation becomes a key challenge into the future. Because it is by reviewing and looking at how we can get around the accounting equation that we as a profession can contribute to organizations in a better way. So to go forward, we will have to undertake research into these aspects. It is through investigations, it is through research that we can find out solutions. Textbooks don't give us those solutions. They just tell us how to do it. That's about it. So we got to get to the next step of researching into these issues so that we can advance the profession. We can make a contribution. How do we make this? How do we make this contribution? Knowledge itself is not enough, is not sufficient. While building knowledge, we also need to build capabilities in us. So we need to strike a balance between knowledge and capabilities. Scholarship is about both aspects. To the accountancy profession, ethics is very important because the profession has sustained and survived through ethical conduct. We need to ask whenever we make decisions, whenever we make choices, is that the correct decision? What implication it has? What are the consequences? Is it a dutiful decision? Is it a dutiful choice? We should be able to identify what is right, what is fair, and what is honest in a given context. We also need to execute responsibilities as social constructs. We individually and organizations as a collection of individuals. 
We'll have to communicate. We'll have to look at. Is it the financial information that alone is sufficient? What about non-financial information? We're talking about the University of Caledonia going into becoming a green university. It is about responsibility. So as a profession who is dealing with the aspect of money, we should devise mechanisms to find out how we can account, how we can be responsible for those activities, those ideas, those feelings, those perceptions. We should know, we should come to agreements about reporting. What should be transparency? And what should be confidentiality? Where do we draw the line? Not all information can be disclosed for competitive reasons in organizations. But how much? Is it in the best interest of the public? We have to come to logical conclusions through research. We also need to learn languages. Local languages are great, gives us a sense of pride, but for communication reasons, for expansive reasons, for to make better choices and decisions, we need to learn and practice global languages. The more you know, the better it is. So, the overarching, the overarching aspect here, for all these aspects of scholarships, ethics, responsibility, reporting and communication in going forward, improving the, part, the, the position of the profession, the key is education. Education provided by the university and by the profession. And the universities have to pay, have to play an active role, especially through research because it is the universities that generates new knowledge that expands the horizons of the profession, that challenge the status quo of professional practice. Education becomes the center that radiates into all these aspects. So as educators, as students, and those who will go into the profession, we have a responsibility. We have a way of doing this and to do it. We have to look at what sort of outcomes we would like to achieve through student learning. Are we addressing the future concerns, the future importance, ethics, responsibility, the reporting, communication? Are we addressing them? The learning outcomes should reflect that. 
What sort of learning activities are we providing to students to get to those learning outcomes so that they become competent in those areas that we would like them to prosper and carry into the world. And along with that are the assessment tasks. How do we assess students? What sort of assessment types we use to assess students so that we can measure the learning of those students and say, well, they are done. So the emphasis in learning today, as I pointed out to you, is to strike the balance between knowledge and capabilities. So looking at the Bloom's taxonomy, our focus should be much on can students construct new knowledge? Can students justify a situation? Can students apply that knowledge into new situations? So that we develop higher skills of students. Thank you.